So a friend of mine have recently forwarded me a finance TikTok from this creator called Kaden Chang, and I thought it was a pretty interesting um, discussion that I would like to further develop. Of course, clearly, um, he's the better creator here because he has fifty two thousand followers, more than triple of me, and he has garnered a total of hundred ninety two thousand likes. So as far as when I was scrolling through his um, profile itself, every single TikTok video um, delivers twenty, thirty, and even hundreds of thousands of views. So that aside, I didn't know so many people on the TikTok platform is so interested in some of this finance content. So I guess maybe I'll be a TikToker next time as well. But anyhow, um, let's take a look at one of the specific videos that I wish to basically unpack on um, this idea around PE ratio and why I think Kaden has a wrong interpretation of how to use a price to earnings ratio. Should you buy Nvidia today? Now, cheap giant Nvidia is worth more than Google owner Alphabet a day after surpassing Amazon in value. Nvidia post revenue up 265% on booming AI business, their revenue year on year, which was shown in Nvidia's website from 2023 to year 2024, has gone up by 126%. And their net income, which is their profit, has gone up by 581%. And if we look at their past 10 years data of their revenue, do you notice that it's an uptrend? But do note that revenue is vanity. So let's look at their profit, which is sanity. Now, their net income, which is a profit, has also gone up uh, tremendously. If we could do a re quick recap of all the videos in our TikTok channel, I think the worst is WeWork and Success Resources. Now, on the contrary, just my personal take, I think Nvidia seems to be more predictable and has a brighter future. From the perspective of Charlie Munger, who was the Vice President of Berkshire Hathaway, how does he know when and what to buy in the business? So from the perspective of Charlie Munger, there there are four filters. Today, we're going to focus on the last criteria, which is to buy a good business at a cheap price with a margin of safety. Why is it so important for us to buy a business at a cheap price? Now, imagine if you travel back in time and you bought Tesla on the 5th of November 2021, you have bought it at $407. But for today, the share price is about $200, which means that if you're sitting on Tesla stock right now and you bought it during its peak, you will have a paper loss of 50%, which means that in order for you just to break even, the share price today has to go up by 103%. Yeah, so you realize that losing money is quite easy and making money is a bit difficult, which is why it's very important for us to buy a good business at a cheap price. At a cheap price. How do you know whether a business is cheap? Now, there's a whole long list of criteria. One common criteria, which is called P-E ratio. P-E ratio is simply equals to the price per share divided by the earnings per share. So price per share is the share price that you see every single day that goes up and down. Earnings per share means if you buy one share of the company, what is the profit that the company makes? If the P-E ratio is 20, 20 is equal to 20 divided by 1. It simply means that for every dollar of profit that the company makes in a year, you do not mind paying $20. Now, it also means if you buy a business where the P-E ratio is 20, it takes about 20 years for your investment to break even. But unfortunately, we cannot use a P-E ratio as a standalone ratio. Now, one way to look at P-E ratio is really to look at the past P-E ratio of the company. This diagram shows the P-E ratio of NVIDIA for the past uh, many years. On the 18th of July 2023, NVIDIA's P-E ratio peaked at 247.36. And as of today, the P-E ratio is 89. So in other words, if you have bought NVIDIA during its peak 247, you'll be sitting on a huge paper loss today. So now the question is... Uh, okay, so I'd like to just stop Kaden here. So I've got really good news. Tiger Brokers have recently extended their sign-up promotion and you can check it out with the link below. So for new users to Tiger Brokers, from now until the end of March of 2024, when you open a new account, you will get unlimited commission-free trading for both Hong Kong and Singapore and also China A share stocks for 365 days. And for those of you who trade US stocks, you also get to enjoy 180 days commission-free trades for US. So when you make your first deposit of at least 300 Singapore dollars, you enjoy 10 USD worth of Apple shares. If you make a first deposit of more than 1,000 US dollars and complete five new buy trades, you'll receive 30 US dollars worth of Apple shares. And one sure win draw to get free fractional shares valued between $8.80 to $888. And most importantly, for those of you who actually use the link below and fund another 2,000 Singapore dollars within seven days after the first deposit, you get an additional 30 US dollars worth of Tesla shares. And there are many sign up rewards up for grab. 
I don't know what you are waiting for and thank you Tiger Brokers for sponsoring this video. So I think before we delve deeper into the um, arena and realms of PE ratio, I would just like to commend Caden. I think a lot of his presentation and his discussion is quite um, personable, relatable, easy to understand. And he has also briefly talked about how you should look at a company's valuation. Um, PE ratio is just one of the many. But however, in this short TikTok video, he only managed to um, develop um, this PE ratio argument, which I personally think that how he looked and how he explained to uh, more than a few hundred thousand people, uh, it might be a little bit dangerous when you walk away with those kind of lessons. So I think let's just dive right into it. He was comparing Nvidia's past PE ratio um, based on the price chart, where back in July of 2023, they are trading at a PE of 247, while in Feb of 2024, the PE was closer to 89. And then he went on to claim that for investors that went in on the July 18th, 2023, you'll be sitting on a huge paper loss. However, when I just do a quick Google search um, on Nvidia stock chart, when I pull the same exact time frame, on the contrary, the investor would be sitting on a 42% um, capital gain rather than the so-called sitting on a paper loss. So what exactly happened? So before that, um, when I scrolled through the comment section, there was quite a few of them that were bantering with Caden, saying that um, you should follow Nancy Pelosi and I shouldn't have paper handed, etc, etc. So not many people essentially caught um, the, the mistake here. And there was this comment that um, rightfully pointed it out from CPLER. Sir, you mentioned at the 245 mark that if someone bought Nvidia when the PE ratio was 247, they would be at a loss. But the thing is at that time, the share price was 470. And when Nvidia was at its peak PE, um, they were right around 450 to 470. And after the comparison, when the PE actually contracted, it actually traded closer to $650, $670 per share. And that's a $200 um, price gain. So Caden actually replied, today is about $200. So I'm not too sure what he's talking about, but at least based on Google's price chart today, um, it's closer to $600 or 650 not 200 So Arnold said, same thing, I was wondering where the huge paper loss is. Yeah, man, so actually no loss, right? In fact, it's quite a huge gain. Because I think their earnings have grown faster than the share price growth, and thus, the PE ratio is lower now. So let's try to develop the argument further. So I'm just going to give you a very simple scenario of the typical um, quote-unquote value investor. So step one is when someone pitches the value investor, a company, telling you why it's a buy. Step two, the value investor will Google the stock name and its price. Step three, they will look at the current PE ratio. Step four, if it's anything above 20, um, it's too expensive for him or her. Step five, for those that goes one step further, they will actually look at the forward PE instead. So even when taking into account their one-year growth based on the consensus estimates of the analysts, and if it's still above 20 or even 30 times, it's still expensive because, hey, P ratio above 20, above 30 means my break-even price or my break-even time period is 20 to 30 years. Why would I want to wait so long? Nah, it's a pass. So now, in the comment section down below, own up now if you are one of those typical value investor scenario that I um, basically depicted. So I'm also just going to admit here, sometimes I also fall into this sort of biases where I also personally fall into this kind of traps and just treat investing as a very easy game, um, use this sort of heuristics and simple framework to basically weasel my way out, saying that, oh, it's too expensive, I don't want to be bothered about um, the company stock um, for now. What's a key component of your PE ratio? PE basically represents price to earnings. So on the numerator, it's the price per share, which is the stock price that you see every day, and the denominator, which is the earnings per share. So it basically gives you a quick glimpse on the expected pay down period to basically break even. So if it's 20 times PE, you are expecting it to take 20 years for you to break even on your costs. And of course, let's not forget about inflation and the discount rate and etc. But those is a much further topic to develop. But there's a very, very big caveat here. The big caveat is the earnings in the future will stay relatively consistent or sustainable. So if you look at a company with a one times PE ratio, um, some of these deep value investors will think that, oh, wow, it's so cheap. I can buy the company today and just one year later, I can get back my entire capital. But oftentimes than not, um, the earnings might be distorted. Maybe because of a backward looking nature, when you look at the backward PE ratio, the earnings of last year might be very high because of one time incident or a freak incident. And moving forward, uh, maybe they don't have the ability to continue earning those sorts of earnings. 
So that's why I think as Caden mentioned, P ratio should not be the only way for you to determine the valuation of the company. However, um, the application here, as we can see on this NVIDIA case, is clearly wrong. So I think if you to go back to the NVIDIA case study, you can see that this was the time period that we are talking about. And I essentially pull out um, their earnings per share um, on a trailing 12-month basis from macro trends. And pre this explosion in earnings, as you can see on this tail end, um, it's really a hockey stick kind of explosion. Um, in July of 2023, or even before July of 2023, which is Q2 of 2023, they were actually posing uh, earnings per share of closer to $2 per share. And right after that, uh, in January of 2024, they actually posted uh, earnings per share of closer to $12 per share. So 12 versus 2, that's a 6x in earnings per share in a short span of um, less than 2-3 quarters. So if you take the time capsule back, back in July of 2023, NVIDIA's PE was right at its peak at around 247 times. But their earnings per share was at $1.92 which also explains why their share price was around 450 to based on the so-called peak um, PE period. Now, if you fast forward to February of 2024, that's when the PE ratio actually came down significantly to 56 times, but the earnings per share, which is the denominator of the fraction itself, has 6x to $11.93. So if you compute them together and you multiply them, you get a share price of $672. So does it mean that if your PE ratio contract by five times, means that you lose money? Evidently not. And when you look at historically how NVIDIA's PE ratio has basically contracted, it's contracting at a very, very fast rate, which also explains that their earnings, which is the denominator, is growing at an extremely high pace. So then you'll come back to the question, when is actually a good time to use PE ratio? The short answer is almost never. So PE ratio should never be the only metric you look at when judging valuations. And it should always be benchmarked against something. Just looking at a PE ratio, the number itself don't tell you much. You need to benchmark it against the sustainability of the earnings. How consistent do you foresee the earnings to be produced by the company itself? The expected growth rate moving forward, because clearly, if Nvidia is able to double, double, double its earnings, then the PE ratio will just get cut into half, half, half. And that's why you can see that why early investors that bought in such a high PE ratio are still able to make bang um, on the capital appreciation front. And of course, last but not least, the quality of the business. And a higher quality company tend to command a more premium valuation because it ties back to how confident investors are in how these companies are able to churn out the level of earnings and also profitability. So when using a PE ratio, sometimes investors also like to use it to basically compare across the same company's historical um, PE ratio, like what Caden actually did. And this is something called a relative valuation. However, this might sometimes not be fair as well, because if you look at a stock price or you look at a company history over the last decade or so, you can probably argue that even though the company name is the same, but the business model, um, the environment that they're operating in, their competitiveness, their economic mode, everything has probably changed to a certain extent. So it doesn't really represent the full picture of the investment itself, especially when there is an impairment in the business model or the mode of the company, which is why um, some companies remain as value trap, even though um, the price to earnings ratio continues to deteriorate. And last but not least, um, it's probably more suitable to use PE ratio on companies that are much more matured with not much expectations or deviations from the consensus. For example, when you look at huge companies like Coca-Cola or Procter & Gamble with not much revenue growth or growth path ahead of them. So on these kind of companies, for investors that like to use PE ratio, I think it's still fine. However, when you look at high growth companies like Tesla or even Nvidia, using PE ratio might not be a very suitable benchmark or criteria here. So these are some of the nuances when looking at PE ratios. You most likely can't use it on young or high growth companies because most of them are probably unprofitable or don't have much that flows down to the bottom line. If you move towards the scaling companies like Tesla, for example, some investors that I know like to use alternatives like PEG, which is price earnings growth, meaning taking into account PE versus the growth that they are expecting. For example, if Nvidia, let's say in this case, have a PE of 60, but they're expected to grow at a 60% clip over the next one year or so. So the PEG would be 60 divided by 60, and it's equals to one. And I believe a huge proponent of using PEG is a growth investor called Peter Lynch. You should also take into consideration the business model of the different enterprises. And to give you an example, um, specifically for Amazon, in this case study, if you to really track Amazon's um, price to earnings and um, how they're able to churn out cash flow and their revenue growth, you'll probably never buy Amazon as a typical 
value investor if you just look at PE ratio because Amazon was never cheap to begin with. And there are many ways to be able to arrive at a fair valuation for some of these companies. Some like to use a DCF, some like to use PPS ratio, some like to use some of the parts. And I think it's really your deep appreciation of the different businesses and the stock price and how the stock is performing that gives you that edge into understanding which is the better way um, to value a company. And don't just use a simplistic way of just looking at PE ratio, which clearly um, did not work in Nvidia's case. Now, moving on, um, sometimes PE ratio expansion can be justified. So I really love this analogy. So let's assume that you are now writing a book and you're at chapter three. Um, you don't really know what the conclusion of the book would be. And there will be a huge deviation in terms of where the company um, projection or how the company future will look like. And that's when you have that huge variation and using PE ratio is not a fair gauge. And most of the time, many of these companies are in their scaling phase or in their growth phase. So compared to a book with a total of 35 chapters and you are already at chapter 30, and you probably have a very good grasp of this business, um, the business model, how they are bringing in their bottom line, which is why um, there's not much story to be built here. So it goes back to the point of what kind of story you can tell for the company and what's the expectations um, being built into the company valuation today. And I think the last point that I wish to bring home is most of the time, value investors actually lack creativity. So they can't visualize or they can't see the growth path ahead. So they tend to look at more mature companies with very stable growth outlook ahead so that they don't have to imagine or be creative with many of their models and projections forward. So growth investors will point at them and say that you have to believe it before you can see it. And the value investors on the other hand would say that many have died believing without seeing. So the debate carries on between the growth camp versus the value camp. But please, for value investors, um, don't just stop at using a PE ratio. Please build the story. Please tell us why um, you don't like the current valuations because maybe for Nvidia's case, you don't believe that the sustainability of the demand for the chips will continue on. You don't think that the earnings will be consistent. You might think that competitors will come into Nvidia's lunch. You think that Nvidia might not have as strong a mood. So please um, list down your reasons and numbers on a standalone basis don't mean anything unless you attach a story. So I hope you guys enjoyed this discussion and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.